Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining my YouTube channel. If you are new here and you're just finding me, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, my name is Angela Ajwa and I am on an adventure. So, today I'm actually doing a quick visit to the Bin Jomu Museum here in Qatar. Um, this is in honor of Black History Month. I wanted to visit there, particularly that museum, as it discuss um, African slaves coming to the Gulf region talking about African slaves coming to the Middle East, and I just feel that as an African woman, as a Caribbean woman, as a black woman living in the Middle East, but originally from the US, it's just so pertinent that we are telling these stories, that we are honoring our ancestors, and that these stories are not forgotten. So, I'm not necessarily prepared, I feel, for what I will see today, um, but I feel that it's so important, um, particularly as a black woman, as a black individual living in the US, these stories necessarily aren't told. We're somewhat told and taught the transatlantic trade. Um, even in school, it's not necessarily discussed as often, um, but particularly, what did slavery look like? What did um, indentured servitude, what did that look like in other parts of the world? Again, thank you guys so much for joining me. We're heading out today. Hope you enjoy. If you do, as always, feel free. You can like, subscribe, um, and please share. This is a story that I really feel needs to be told. It's passionate. It's dear to my heart. Um, let's go. As I mentioned before, walking into the museum, standing outside, I had no idea what to expect. So just after leaving the main hall, one of the first rooms you'll come upon describes slavery in a historical and world stage. Interestingly, if you're looking at this bust here, the plaque just makes a mention of Ethiopian slaves and their use in Greek bathhouses, um, and particularly aphrodisia. So if you know anything really about Greek history, I'm very certain you can imagine what actually went on in those bathhouses and what those slaves actually had to partake in um, and had to endure. The next object we have in this room are these transatlantic slave trade shackles. And just for anyone who's never seen them before, just walking into the room and immediately seeing them, my heart went into my throat. It's something that you see in books. It's something that you see in photos. It's something that you never think that you'll see in person. And while being an African woman on my dad's side, um, having slavery necessarily not be a part of the narrative on that end, but then also being Caribbean, being from the Virgin Islands, and to have a location called Emancipation Garden, it just floored me to know that my ancestors got to the Virgin Islands wearing these shackles. The museum goes on to describe the many ways in which African slaves arrived in bondage to the Middle East, from culture to capture to confinement.
Operating out of the city of Zanzibar in Tanzania, Kilawa was a major slave hub when transporting slaves to and from Africa and the Middle East. Along the walls of the museum were the cost of human life. A 15-year-old female, a home domestic, would be 300 rupees, or about $5 US. And a 10-year-old boy, hired to be a pearl diver in the ocean, a thousand rupees, or $15, the cost of human life. <laughs> Final rooms, the museum covers modern day slavery, which here in Qatar was finally outlawed in 1952. This portion of the museum covers topics from the clothes that we wear, the phones and electronics that we use, the services that we enjoy, and the entertainment that we partake in. How modern day slavery operates still to this day, very much out in the open. exhausted is probably the best way to describe how I feel right now um, it was a lot I think just even walking into that first room and immediately seeing uh, the slave shackles put it in perspective for me it's something that you see in photos it's something that you might see in a history book but to actually be in a room with audio in the background talking about the transportation of slaves and having a pair of shackles in front of you that you can touch really just immediately put into perspective where I was and this, just the gravity of why I needed to be there. Um, I'm so glad that I went. I am a bit exhausted. I can't imagine being on a boat for months and then only to disembark get off the boat and then you're walking and trekking through the desert for another however many days, weeks, months until you get to your final location. And in that location, you're then sold as a slave. I'm so proud to be an African woman. I'm so proud to be Caribbean. I'm so proud of just the skin that I'm in, just to know that I am from strength. 
I'm so proud of my ancestors. I'm glad that I went. Um, and I definitely wanted to experience and to share this story. It's so important. Um, again, if you are enjoying content like this, please let me know. Comment below. Um, like, share, subscribe. Definitely, as always, I'm mixing up a bit of fashion, culture, and travel. And just having a really honest dialogue about tribes and, and being a person of color as we navigate, you and I, <laughs> the globe together. Um, thank you so much for watching, and until next time, the journey continues. Thanks so much, guys, for watching. For more on fashion, travel, and living abroad, be sure to subscribe to my channel now.